Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, how are you? Good evening. How are you feeling? I'm good, and you? Okay, we are in session number three. And we are almost done with the first uh, week. And in this case, you can see that time is running so fast because um, tomorrow we are going to end the week number one. So it's very, very, very fast. And yesterday we have um, a new topic that is conjunction. We were talking about that uh, word or that part of a speech. And, and now we are going to end the topic conjunctions and we are going to talk about a new topic that is a uh, model verbs. We are going to see what are the model verbs, uh, what words we can use for model verbs. We are going to construct that information using exercises. And also we are going to have some um, Exercises in which you are going to use the words that we are going to learn. So in this case, when we are seeing in the topic um, model verbs, uh, we are going to divide the model verbs into categories, we can say. And we are going to have some exercises in which you are going to put into practice the words that we are going to learn. So in this case, I think, I don't know if we are going to have um, enough time to complete the four, one, two, three, the five um, categories that we have for a um, model verb. But in this case, we are going to have uh, the first category uh, of model verbs, and then we are going to have an exercise. Then we are going to see the second um, category of model verbs, and we are going to have uh exercises and we are going to do it like that so we are going to end in the topic conjunctions with the list of words that we are going to use uh, for that um categories and then we are going to see the other topics so let me share the screen that we have here the document in which we have the information that we are uh, learning in this course. So that's the last thing that we were seeing uh, yesterday that are the information about the conjunction. So now I'm going to write the list, the conjunction list uh, that we are going to use. But in this case, we were talking about the rule um, of the usage of conjunction. And the rule number one, it says, Conjunctions are for connecting past, action, and ideas, as well as nouns, process, and other parts of a speech. And it says that we are going to use this, this kind of word to connect, to make a connection. We're going to see two more rules, and then we're going to see the list. The rule number two, in this case, let's see. Um, Rule number two. Hmm. It's not like that. Okay. It says conjunctions are useful for making lists. In this case, when we are making lists of things that we uh, want to buy in the supermarket, we can use conjunctions. Or when we are um, uh, telling some action that happened in a specific order, we can use Conjunction. It says, for example, we may thank it. Comma, et, 
and coffee. Give me a second. Or breakfast. Let me see. Oh, um, give me a second. Mm Well, the audio. No sé si están escuchando bien o se escucha raro todavía el audio. Por ahorita se escucha bien. Okay. Uh, if you are having trouble uh, listening or understanding uh, the audio, you can tell me because I don't know um, what is happening with uh, my device because I cannot. Um, have this kind of meetings without the, the, the headset, and I don't know how, how to fix it. So if you are having troubles listening to me, you can tell me when you are um, listening something weird or something like that. So, and I was saying that when we are creating this kind of list, when we are doing something or we are um, having something in a specific order, we are going to use the conjunction, and in this case, we have the word here. And that is, in this case, um, connecting the things that we are doing for. And that example, we, we said that we was made in something uh, for breakfast. And we made three different things. We made pancakes, then we made eggs, and at the end, we made Copy. So in that case, we are going to use the conjunction to uh, join, to connect that uh, list or that thing. Then it says the number three or the role number three, when using conjunctions, make sure that all the parts of your sentence agree. This is, we are going to say that um it's about ideas And we have an example. And it says, I wear this yet I'm careful. Does not agree. I wear this yet carefully. In that case, we are using words that agree with the statement that we are creating. For example, I work. Yes, I'm careful. This one we are going to mark in a different color because in this case we are not making the sentence agree. But then we have this one that is said, I wear this limb. I would change the color. Yes, carefully. In this case, we're using something that agrees with this statement. So in that case, we need to make the statement agree with the things that we are writing. Then, there are only a few common conjunctions, yet these words perform many functions. They present explanation, ideas, exceptions, consequences, and contrast. 
And we have a list of conjunctions that are uh, commonly used in English. In this case, we are just uh, going to write the most common conjunctions that we can use when we are speaking in English. So in that case, we are going to write conjunction list. And we are going to have the most common. We have and, as, because, but, for, just as, or, neither, nor, not only, so, yes. So in this case, uh, these ones are the most uh, common uh, conjunctions that we use to. Uh, in this case, we can say that we are creating sentences and we are using these ones to complete, to join those uh, sentences. So in that case, we have the most common, but we know that there are many other words that we can use as conjunction, but those ones are the most common and in which we are feeling like, uh, or we feel very um, secure to use. And we are going to write some examples to know how to create sentences with those conjunctions. There a little bit. Uh, we're not going to create a lot of examples in this case. We're going just to have some examples. Let's see. We have number one. I try to hit the nail, but in this case, I will mark the conjunction. But keep my thumb instead. Next one, I have to go fish and a cat. And we are going to mark the conjunction here. Then we are going to take this out a pad. Then number three, I bow. A new bag. for my oncoming trip. In this case, we have here four. We are going to mark four. Next one, you can have each. ice cream or we are going to mark or a brownie sundae And the last one, and neither the black dress nor the gray dress. 
So in this case, we have a two. We have a neither. Nor. In this case, they work together, neither nor. So we have a five example uh, using conjunction, and we have number one. I try to eat the nail, but hit my thumb instead. In that case, we can say, eh, traté de golpear la uña, pero golpeé mi pulgar en su lugar. Then, number two, I have two goldfish and a cat. Tengo dos peces, son los eh, peces dorados, y un gato. I bought a new bag for my upcoming trip. Compré una nueva cartera para mi próximo viaje. You can have fish ice cream or a brownie sundae. Puedes tener un helado de eh, durazno o un, eh, un helado de de eh, brownie en este caso. And the last one, neither the black dress, ni el vestido negro, ni el gris. We can use that a sentence like that. Neither the black dress, nor the gray one looks right on me. Ni el vestido negro, ni el gris se ve bien en mí. So in that case, we have those examples for the list of um, conjunctions that we were uh, seeing and also we were uh, learning uh, what is a conjunction and how to use it. So in that case, we have just that information for the conjunction. And now we are going to have the topic number two because this is the end of the things that we were um, learning yesterday. So now we have here this one. This is the modal verb. Para esta parte, les estaba diciendo eh, que vamos a tener información sobre los modal verbs, cuáles son las palabras que se utilizan como modal verbs y las vamos a dividir. Vamos a empezar con categorías. Eh, ya van a ver cuáles son la, las categorías que vamos a tener de modal verbs. Y cuando hayamos visto una categoría completa, vamos a hacer un par de ejercicios de aplicación de los modal verbs. So, Okay, I'm here again. We are going to continue. Okay, now we are going to see a model and modal phrases. Then we can call them semi modal. So, first, it says that a modal is a type of auxiliary or helping verb that is used to express ability, possibility, permission, or obligation. Modal phrases or semi-models are used to express the same thing as models, but are a combination of auxiliary verbs and the preposition to. And we are going to see what are the models. But the first thing is that
So in this case, that is the most important thing that we need to know about the modal verb. So, tenemos que los modal verbs son tipo de verbos auxiliares. En este caso, no va a ser nuestro main verb. Va a ser un verbo auxiliar que vamos a utilizarlo para expresar habilidad, posibilidad, permisos y obligaciones. That is the main thing that we need to know about the modal verbs. So, what are the modal verbs that we are going to use tonight? And it says that... Um, The models and semi model in English are so here we have the list of model verbs that we are going to use, and we have the first one that is can, cool. And be able to. Then we have may, might. Also, we have shall, should, must, and have to. And the last one, will and will. So this is the list of model verbs that we are going to use. So when we um, talk about can, call, and be able to, we are going to say uh, what are the uses for those uh, model verbs. Uh, we are going to write some examples in which you can see how to create sentences using uh, those model verbs. And at the end of that, we are going to have uh, some exercises in which you need to put the correct form of the model can, school, and be able to. Then we are going to see may and might, and we are going to see the uses, examples, uh, we are going to see uh, how to create sentences and all of that thing. And again, we are going to have some exercises, and we are going to do it like that with all the, um, the models. So we are going to start with can, school, and be able Two. That is the first category that we are going to learn. So we are going to write number one, and we are going to say can, cool, and be able to. So in this case, they are used to express a variety of ideas in English. And we have here ability or lack of ability. Vamos a utilizar el can, cool, and be able to para expresar una variedad de ideas. Y en este caso vamos a hablar de habilidades o de la falta de habilidades. Se puede utilizar para las dos, para las habilidades o la falta de estas. Then we have present and future. We have tenses. Then we have can. We have cannot or can. Plus base form of the verb. That is the structure that we are going to use for these models. Estas son estructuras que vamos a utilizar para los diferentes tiempos. En este caso tenemos presente y futuro. Vamos a utilizar can o can, y es el negativo, con la forma base del verbo. Y tenemos algunos ejemplos. Number one, Tom can write. Poetry 
very well. So this is a very simple sentence in which we have here the we have here the model verb plus the verb in base form. Esa es la estructura en la que nos tenemos que fijar. Que llevamos el model verb can con el verbo escrito en forma base. No le vamos a agregar nada, no le vamos a cambiar nada. En este caso no agregamos la S porque ya tenemos un modal que está modificando a la persona. En este caso es la tercera persona. Ya no necesitamos escribirle la regla de la tercera persona a este nombre, Tom. Number two, I can sleep. I mean, I can help. I can help you with that next week. Again, I'm going to mark the model plus the verb can help. And we have number three, and it says, Lisa can speak French. So we have here can. And we have the verb speak. So in that case, we have three examples for that structure. Then we have the next one, and it says, M is R will be plus able to plus base form of the verb. This is another structure that we are going to use for this kind of model. And we have, this is, we can say this is positive, but we are going to have a negative one. I'm not, isn't, errand, Then we have want, want to be, plus, able, plus the base form of the verb. Passive and negative structure. And we have the example. Number one. Mike is able to solve complicated math equations. Mike is able to solve. That is the structure in this case here. Because in that case, we have can, call, and be able to. So in that case, we are using able to as a structure. Number two, the support team will be able to help you in about 10 minutes. So we are going to mark, we'll be able to help. That is the structure that we are using. And the number three, I want be able to visit you next summer. So again, want to be able to visit. So we have two kind of structure. Tenemos dos tipos de estructuras para la número uno, en, presente y futuro. 
tenemos la estructura que vamos a utilizar con el can, que es esta, donde utilizamos el positivo negativo, can or can, con la forma base del de verbo. En este caso, no vamos a utilizar el to, que es el infinitivo. En esta forma, solo vamos a utilizar la forma base del verbo sin cambiarla ni agregarle nada. En la siguiente, que es able to, o be able to, ser capaz de, vamos a utilizar el verbo to be. Am, is, are, positive, and negative. Then we are going to use will be for present uh, or positive, I mean, and want or negative. Vamos a utilizar el verbo to be y am, um, is, are, luego utilizamos para las positivas, will be, negativas, won't be, con el able to. En este caso, si vamos a utilizar el able to, con la forma base del verbo otra vez. En este caso, vamos a volver a utilizar el verbo sin el to, porque ya lo estamos utilizando con be able to. No vamos a volver a agregar porque diría, I won't be able to, to visit. In that case, and that is incorrect. In this case, we are not going to use the excuse in the verb. Now, for the past tense, we have cool and we have couldn't. Plus based form. of the verb. And we have one example. And it says, when I was a child, I could clean trees. I could clean trees. So in that case, we have the example. Using the past and referring to uh, when we were children, we can do that action that is climbing three. So who claim here? That is the structure that we are using for the past. Then as we have um, is R, we have a structure with the past. And we have the first one, that is what and where. Plus able to. Plus base form of the verb. And we have negative one, what then? Base form of the verb. And also we have another one here that is has. In this case, it has, haven't, and been able to. In this case, hasn't, this is negative, hasn't, haven't. Plus been able to. Plus, base form of the verb. And we have the example. We have number one, I mean, number one. I wasn't able to visit in the hospital. I wasn't able to visit. Then number two, he hasn't been able to get in touch with the client yet.
hasn't been able to get in touch to get this one. So in this case, we have the structures that we can use for um, talking about ability of lack of ability. So we have some structure that we can use when we are going to uh, talk about the things that we can do. Estas estructuras que estamos utilizando son para hablar de habilidades o de la falta de estas. Cuando decimos somos capaces de, being able to, o be able to, somos capaces de o fuimos incapaces de. So in that case, we are talking about the ability of lack of ability. Y tenemos estructuras para el presente, el futuro y para el pasado. Ahí tenemos eh, los listados, ¿verdad? De fórmulas que podemos utilizar para crear este tipo de oración. And it says, can and cool do not take an infinitive and do not take the future auxiliary wheel. So in that case, uh, when we are creating sentences with can and cool, we are not going to use the infinity form of the verb because it is going to sound very weird. Like I cannot say, I can, I can to help you this afternoon. I can to help you. In that case, we are not going to use the to with the verb because it is not like possible to write it. It's in the correct form, I can help you this afternoon. Así que cuando estemos utilizando can and cool, no vamos a utilizar el infinitivo. No le vamos a poner el to al verbo porque no está eh, correcto. Así como el ejemplo, I can to help. No es correcto decir I can to help. Es I can help you. So in that case, we are not going to use the infinity. Then we have four, possibility and impossibility. Para posibilidades o cosas que no son posibles. Let me see. Ah, don't worry. I think it's very, very common to have that kind of, of problems with the connection. But if you have trouble listening, you can um, wait a little longer. Uh, ah, that's okay. I will do something. Les voy a mandar hoy el enlace de lo que hemos estado viendo. Les voy a mandar el, el, el documento para que ustedes tengan acceso a la información. Por si tienen problemas con el internet, ahí ya tienen todo lo que hemos estado eh, revisando. No se preocupen por eso. So, now we are talking about possibility and impossibility. That is another uh, thing that we have with can and cool. Possibility and impossibility. And we have can and can plus base form. of the verb, and we have the example. This is very simple. Example number one, it says, you can catch that rain at 10.43. You can catch that rain Forty-three. In that case, we have can catch. If we translate that uh, sentence, we can say, puedes atrapar este tren a las 10.43. Pero en este caso, nosotros sabemos que cuando hacemos las traducciones y le damos un sentido, puedes, eh, en este caso, no es atrapar de agarrar como una bola 
sino de poder llegar a tiempo, ¿verdad? De poder abordar el tren. You can catch that train at 10.43. At Then we have number two. He can see you right now. He is in surgery. He can. He can see you right now. He is in surgery. Él no te puede ver, no te puede atender en este momento. Él está en una cirugía. He can see you. Tell me, Cecilia. Uh, yes, Miss. Uh, I have a uh, um, Bueno. Eh, ¿Por qué ponemos catch cuando usted misma explicó, verdad? Que de agarrar mm. o atrapar y no se podría utilizar otro verbo como get, de llegar, porque creería yo que el verbo catch es un poco más literal, literalmente. Mm -hmm. Entonces, yeah. ¿por qué ponemos catch en vez de get o otro verbo? No sé. Ok, that is something... Um... We can say that it's uh, based on the way that we speak. You know that uh, native United States, uh, talking, talking about the United States, the people that live in the United States, they like to use this kind of words. Um, they are not like us in, in, in El Salvador that we use the specific word for something. Nosotros en español decimos, vamos a subir, vamos a tomar el tren, pero tomar en el sentido de poder abordarlo. Y ellos es como utilizan este tipo de verbos para darle como eh, el estilo. It's like the way in, way in which they speak. They like to use that kind of words. And podemos decirles que son como, uh, así como nosotros lo hacemos, como salvadoreñismos, cosas muy típicas de nosotros que podemos utilizar frases eh, para referirnos a una cosa en específico. Lo mismo hacen ellos con sus palabras. Obviamente, nosotros podemos utilizar un verbo que a nosotros nos parezca mejor. In that case, you can say, you can negate the train. You can eh, touch, you can um, get in, in that case, get in in the train. But that is a way to say something. Uh, we have a lot of words that we can use, just one word, and we can use it for a lot of things. And it changes depending on the meaning of the sentence that we are using. But in this case, it's like the style that they are using when they are speaking. And you can use another verb that you find better for the things that you are saying. But in that case, it's the way they speak. They, they have like, a very special way in which they express the ideas that they have. But in this case, it's not like we, not, we cannot change that kind of word. You can use the verb that is better for you in that case. And it's okay, it is not like we are going to say it is a mistake. But in this case, they prefer to tell like this. But if you can see or you can uh, search for phrases like this in another a country, for example, UK, uh, you're going to see that they are using another verb to say that kind of sentences. So in this case, it's depending on the, the English that we are talking. Depends del inglés que hablemos, de la connotación que le estemos dando, así vamos a utilizar los verbos. No en todos los eh, tipos de inglés vamos a utilizar los mismos verbos para las mismas funciones. Así que ahí depende mucho de cómo queramos nosotros interpretar las eh, oraciones y ustedes pueden utilizar los verbos que mejor les convenga. So, in that case, you can use another one. Ok, thank you. You're welcome. So, we have cool and base form of the verb. That is another structure. Cool plus base form.
of the verb. And we have here the example. I could fly Amsterdam if I lived the day before. I could fly. I could fly the Amsterdam if I leave the day before. Hubiera podido volar con Amsterdam, con la aerolínea, si hubiera dejado eh, o si me hubiera ido el día anterior. That's okay. So that is something possible. Si yo lo hubiera hecho, si yo me hubiera ido el día anterior, yo lo hubiera podido lograr. Pero como en este caso no lo hice, no lo logré. So in that case, we are talking about impossibility. Now, for us permission or asking per permission and giving permission. We are going to use also these uh, model verbs for give permission to do something or to ask for permission. So we're going to use can plus subject plus base form of the verb. And in this case, this kind of uh, asking permission or giving permission are informal. And we have an example. And it says, can you lend me ten dollars? Can you lend me ten dollars? We are asking for money in that case. Can you lend me ten dollars? Me podría prestar diez dólares. In that case, it's very informal. It's for uh, someone that we know, uh, for a friend, for a family. But in that case, we are not going to use uh, with people that we don't know. Then, we have a can plus base form of the verb that again is very informal. We have the example, and we have number one. You can borrow my car. In this case, it's not like a question. Puedes tomar prestado mi carro, in that case. It's giving permission to do something. Then we have another one that is cool plus subject plus a base form of the verb. But in this case, it is not informal. In this case, it's polite. And we have the example. We have number one, and it says, Cool, I have your number. Could I talk to your super supervisor, please? Así que para 
eh, dar o pedir permiso, tenemos dos formas. Tenemos la informal y la formal, o la amable, la polite. La primera es más que todo cuando nos conocemos con la persona a la que le hablamos, ya sean amigos, ya sea familia, o alguien con el que tengamos confianza. Vamos a utilizar el can, la subject, la base form of the verb. Pero cuando es eh, algo serio, algo con alguna persona que no tenemos tanta confianza, Vamos a utilizar el cool plus subject plus base form of the verb. Así como en los últimos dos ejemplos, cool, I have your number. Puedo tener tu número. And the second one, could I talk to your supervisor, please? Podría hablar o, o puedo hablar con tu supervisor, por favor. In this case, is like sounding very, very polite, asking for something. Then, we have just one more for the call, can, and uh, be able to, and then we have the exercises. Tenemos uno más, that is make a suggestion, or to make a suggestion, and then we are going to have the exercises. For this one, we are going to use cool plus base form of the verb. And this one again is informal. And we have one example. And it says, you can take this, the tour of the castle tomorrow. You can take tomorrow. That's okay. So, now, after that, we have the structure for these sentences. We are going to have five, just five sentences in which you are going to say, what is the correct form of can, cool, or be able to, that is perfect for the sentence. Vamos a tener cinco ejercicios, cinco oraciones nada más. Voy a escribir la oración, pero le va a faltar una parte. Ustedes me van a decir si es can, si es cool, o si es be able to. Así que voy a escribir las oraciones, tómense su tiempo para irlas analizando, y vamos a ir discutiendo cuál es la respuesta. So, let's see. I mean, exercise.
I need to change the exercises because I want you to see the five exercises. So let me take this here. And number five. So we have five sentences that we need to um, analyze. We're going to read them and you are going to find the answer very, very quick. And the first one, we have Tony run long distances when he was a boy. In that sentence, they are talking about something in the past. So in that case, you need to know what word are you going to use or past. Tommy ran long distances when he was a boy. Number two, do you please call a tow truck for me? My car broke down. Polite question. What words we are going to use for polite request? In that case, you are asking for something in a polite way. Do you please call a tow truck for me? My car broke down. Number three, the students to buy their textbooks today. The bookstore is all of, of them. So in that case, you are going to use negative statements because in that case, the students, and I can say the structure because you are going to find the answer very quick. And number four, you teach me how to fix my computer. You are so good at it. That is a question. You teach me how to fix my computer. You are so good at it. And the last one, we have two words that we need to find what are that two words for that sentence. You reach the customer if you call him at four this time. It's another question, so you need to know what kind of words we're going to use. If you have the answer for one of these sentences, you can tell me. First, uh, cool. 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 Tony. Cool. Uh -huh. cool. Tony run long distance when he was a boy. That's good, perfect, thank you. Number two, who has the answer for number two? Can you um, please call a tow truck for me? In this case, can or call? Call. Can. 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 It's polite, remember, polite, for polite. Cool teacher. Cool. cool. Good. Para eh, cuando somos más serios, más formales, acuérdense que utilizamos cool. Cuando es más informal, utilizamos can. Could you please call a tow truck for me? My car broke down. Number three, the student. This is something. Tell me. Oh, we have three. Can who be able to? Remember when we have or we are talking about possibilities. Use able to. So in this case, be able. Be able ah, to buy. The students, what is the verb to be that we are going to use here? The students. Be able to buy. The first. Three. R. 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 R
capaces de comprar, no tuvieron la posibilidad de comprar. Number four. Can. Ah, that's good. Can you? Can you teach me how to fix my computer? And the last one, we have two for this. Can. Teacher. Mm -mm. Could. Could, could you? Could, mm -mm. could you? Mm -mm. Are. Are you? Uh, future. Will. Will. Good. Will you? Possibility. Are able to. Ah, will you? Be able to. In that case, we are going to use this. Be uh, able to. I will. To. Mm -hmm. That's good. Very, very good. So we are going to have the uh, topic here, and we are going to do something like this tomorrow with other exercises in which you are going to put into practice all the uh, knowledge that you have. We are going to end the session here, and we are going to see each other tomorrow in the last session for this week. So have a really good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.